5,600 meters above sea level, February 6, 2021. Nanda Devi range of the Garhwal Himalayas. A chunk of rock around 400 meters in diameter, three times as large as a cricket ground, broke off from its parent mountain and fell onto an overhanging glacier. As the massive piece of ice gave way, rocks and mud tumbled down in an avalanche, falling straight into the path of the Romti River, which was flowing between mountain crevices at a height of 3,500 meters. The falling debris created an ad hoc dam, temporarily blocking the river's flow and forming a lake. As the Romti continued to flow into this newly created lake, the pressure on the dam began to grow. Eight hours later, on the morning of February 7th, the dam gave way as the mass of rock and mud gushed out, destroying everything in its path, leaving 200 dead or missing and damaging 4,000 crore worth of property, obliterating two power plants, Rishi Ganga completely and Dali Ganga partially. This sequence of events was determined when a team of five geologists took pictures of the area from a helicopter. We studied the satellite images and added to it what we saw. This is just a preliminary report. We cannot say that we were not warned. The Kedarnath deluge in 2013 destroyed 24 hydropower projects. People protested outside the Uttarakhand High Court when the Vishnu Ganga hydro project was proposed for reconstruction. An expert committee headed by Dr. Ravi Chopra that was appointed by the court even cautioned. The riverbed profile has changed significantly. We suggest not to construct any hydropower plant in the upper Himalayas. But the problem is that Uttarakhand, despite having the potential of generating 12 gigawatt of hydropower, the second largest in India, has an acute power shortage and spends over a thousand crore each year in buying electricity. How can they ignore the water cascading into rivers that potentially contain the energy equal to several nuclear bombs? At present, there are 86 hydro projects with a cumulative capacity of around 2.6 gigawatts operational in Uttarakhand and more are on the way. So the real question everyone's asking is whether this tragedy was due to climate change or was it a natural occurrence? Glacial Lake Outburst Flood GLOF, the name given to flash floods in snowy mountains, happened in Rishi Ganga in 1968 and in 1970s Alaknanda flood. So the problem is not only climate change, though it is a contributing factor. Some experts like Nepal's Pima Gyamsho, however, believe otherwise. The tragedy in Uttarakhand is a tragic reminder of the dangers we face from climate change. He has science backing him. Warming has increased the thermal profile of ice from minus 6 degrees Celsius last century to minus 2 degrees now. Melting glaciers create lakes, 400 large ones at last count in the Himalayas, up from 127 in 2005, that can cause flash floods if breached. But how is one to monitor so many glacial lakes? Key benchmark glaciers in every basin should be monitored and the results extrapolated. Some amount of monitoring is already happening through satellite imagery and remote sensing technology. But the information can be better enhanced by putting people on the ground, who can install equipment to measure changes in water levels, discharge balances, etc. Presently, there is a wealth of information collated by different agencies lying all over the place that need to be coordinated. Annual monitoring by an appointed nodal agency can help determine when to drain a lake and reduce the threat of GLOF by building side canals. Other threats are developmental activities like the 719km Chardam Road, partly built by uprooting vegetation along river slopes, which was criticised. Environmentalists were also aghast when it was found that 56,000 trees would be cut for its creation. In response to their petition, a three-judge bench of the Supreme Court in 2020 ruled against broad-width highways of the project to minimize damage. However, the government is mindful of this and has been allocating larger funds towards green energy, even though coal still gets the bulk of the energy budget. Costa Rica, though, is a unique country in that it generates more than 98% of its electricity from renewable sources, 75% of it from hydropower. However, their hydropower generation depends on rainfall and not glacial waters, so it is not as prone to flood damage as India. Unfortunately, while project reports study several things – pollution, river flow, environmental assessment and forests – glaciology is not part of their study. It is also alleged that legal loopholes are often used to pass environmental assessment reports, as such projects are a monetary windfall for the political babu and contractor lobby. In 2011, 56 power projects in Uttarakhand were cancelled after it was alleged that 17 were allocated to just four entities. 
Fortunately, Uttarakhand also has the option of harnessing wind energy to solve its electricity problems. High wind speeds in Uttarakhand due to low pressure belts is ideal for windmills. With Molikal, Harshil, Gaudauri and Ransi areas all having the minimum wind speeds required to rotate turbines. The 2.4 megawatt project at Bacheli Khal in Tehri Gaiwal became the first windmill project in Uttarakhand in 2013. However, we know that despite this tragedy, hydropower projects will continue to be built and in fact need to be built to solve India's energy needs. But to minimize loss of life and property, both preventive measures and disaster management preparation should be made a priority. Bisbo's Limerick. Flash floods in Uttarakhand are happening too often. Hydro projects or bridges, everything they flatten. Is it a natural event or are we living our own torment? Whatever be the cause, to nature we must soften. Do join Bisbo on Discord and follow us on Instagram at GoBisbo. Subscribe to Bisbo and click on the bell icon to get notified whenever Bisbo releases a new video. Sources of all our information is listed in the video description section.